everybody, it's EK from EK Gorm Designs and I am sneaking in today with the third and final video in my three-part series for five fast cards featuring the May Barista Blend subscription kit. It's from White Rose Crafts and it is officially sold out in the individual forms. However, there are still a handful for those who sign up for the multi-kit subscription. So I think it's three or four kits. Go check out the website. I'll put the little blurb down in the uh, box below. But there's a handful of these kits that you can still buy if you sign up for the collection of kits over a period of months. Yeah, I'm not a good salesman. I apologize. <laughs> but my first card here, I am featuring a stamped image from the exclusive Little Acres stamp set. Um, the only place you can right now currently get this stamp set is from the Barista Blends May subscription kit. So if you want this stamp set, you're going to have to sign up for the multiple subscription kits package. There we go. I'm done. I colored him up with my Copics and I love the little stamp set because it's all cow puns. So you're as sweet as a cow mo mochiato. See? See what I did there? For the background of the stamp, the stamp, the stamp, the stamp, the card, the card, I took some of the textured 12 by 12 paper that comes in the kit and trimmed it down so they'd make great mats. And then I took the really fun lined paper that's in the kit and trimmed it up to mat out my cow friend. I wanted to keep this one really simple and let the coloring and the cute cow stand out for themselves. And I think I was able to do that. It's always kind of hard making that prediction of exactly how far you need to push something. So you get enough color that it's not boring, but not so much color that it looks that you're wasting your time, especially when you're doing five fast cards. And the point of these videos I'm doing here is trying to show you how you can use this kit and really like that you don't have to be the most brilliant craftiest card maker or scrapbooker or whatever in the world that you can take the pieces of this kit and on your own make uh, really fun projects simply quickly without a whole lot of expertise. Now, if you are the craftiest scrapbooker in the world, you can do all kinds of cool things. You should definitely check out what the design team is doing with this kit because there's some really incredible projects happening over at White Rose Crafts. I am just quickly showing how to simply use this kit in a fun and unique way where each project is different on its own. To wrap up this first card, I pulled up the Nouveau Drops that are included in the kit and added just a series of three dots. Now I made a mistake. I should have, I don't know. I don't like where I placed the dots, but in the end I like the card. So mistakes happen. I do it. My second card is a piece of floral paper and it's kind of, it's kind of the card I would send to my mom just because it, the floral to me says, I don't know. It's, I, I definitely wouldn't hand this one to my husband, but I took the piece of printed floral paper and one of the ephemera sheets plus this sticker of coffee and just added everything onto the card together. Now I put a little three-dimensional tape underneath the back of the top of the tag because I wanted just that section to pop up so it was the ephemera piece in itself was three-dimensional. And I pulled out a couple of these uh, mulberry paper hearts that are included in the kit and I couldn't find any glue so I just took some of the Nuvo and glued them down with the colored Nuvo. Yes, that does work. Nuvo is for more than just embellishmenting. That's not a word, is it? Embellishmenting? I'm going with it. It's for more than just making embellishments. And there you go. There is the second card. That one was super quick, super easy, and it's just a placement of a couple pieces of paper to finalize it. For card three, I used one of the pieces of printed paper, but I used both sides of it. So one side is this large print floral, and the other side is the red and orange gingham, orange, yellow, beige, mm, could be any of those. And I used both sides to create a fun image. Then I took out one of the stickers from the sticker pack, the big coffee sticker, and draped it over the edge and then realized I wanted one of the cups. And what I love with this set, this collection, is that that floral motif is on so many different pieces that it all matches and blends together. This card was super easy, yet I really, really like how it turned out. My fourth card uses some of the printed paper. Is I think one of the last big pieces of printed paper I had in 
the trimming up of all the paper. I've officially trimmed everything down. Now I'm down just, just to scraps. However, I still have enough scraps that I could probably make another five cards if I wanted to. I used the gingham stinkum, wow, gingham sticker to create a belly band and then popped up this piece of ephemera onto some three dimensional squares. I realized I needed a little bit more black in the card to make the gingham strip work, so I actually distressed the edge of the ephemera piece with my Versamark cube, giving that little bit of extra black to the project, which I think actually worked really nicely in the end. The card needed just a bit more, so I pulled out the bean sticker and stuck it down and realized it didn't work. But as soon as I outlined it with my pen, the whole image just popped. It like allowed itself to stand out from the busy background. And there we go. That is the final card. Again, another super easy one, but not boring in the least. Card five was a struggle. Now I'm getting down to just what bits I have left. And you'll see this one where I'm really struggling with how to compose a card. If you've watched these in the past, you know I don't pre-plan much because that's not my jam. I am a fly on the seat of pants kind of girl, or at least when it comes to crafting. So yeah, I had bits of scraps and I realized that everything was going to fit nicely. And I thought it would be really cool if I used some of the banner pieces to make a little banner hanging off the coffee background. And then I realized it didn't work. Actually, it didn't work at all. The great news is, is after I put these three pieces down, I can pick them back up, put them back on the sticker sheet, and reuse them. I may need to put a little glue behind them, but I can absolutely reuse them despite my mistake. So what I did was pull out this sticker instead, put it down, and then add these two little pieces, and thought, okay, this does work. What really helped it, again, was outlining the whole thing with some black pen. This is a super thin black pen. Yes, it's got a funny little head on it. it surprisingly good pen and I pull, reach for it a lot and kind of reach for it today just to get this done. It's one of those projects where you think, gosh, I really don't like it. But when I, by the time I went and took photographs of it, the card had grown on me. It was bright. It was bold. It was definitely coffee themed and it made me happy. So who cares what else anybody thinks? Like I said, it started out really rough, really hard, but in the end, I liked the colors that came out on it and just kind of a fun card. This week I'm once again featuring a bonus card for those of you who made it this far using one of the card frames that's included in the kit. I am literally just using up the scraps here. So I used this piece of great paper and pulled out my X-Acto knife and mat and trimmed out whatever was overlapping the whole of this jelly bean card frame. This is a shaker bit card frame from Jelly Bean Soup. Um, it's included in the kit. It's obviously a coffee themed shaker card. And it's kind of a perfect way to wrap up this three-part series. So I cut off the paper that was in the hole, making the background look, I think, really cool. It had a really nice split personality to it. I pulled out the coffee bean stamp from the stamp set and using some black ink, added coffee beans to the back of the card frame, the back of the card frame? To the card frame, to create its own printed paper look. And I love the juxtaposition of the crazy busy coffee mugs in black and then the very crisp, clean black coffee beans on white. I always like to, when I have an envelope that goes with a card, create the envelope to look like the card so I was able to put the beans on both sides of the card. Now for inside, I wanted this floral paper to show through the shaker bits. So I just simply traced the card and then realized my pen didn't work. That one went into the garbage because apparently it's done. Grabbed a different one and trimmed it out and I cut inside my line. Usually I'd cut on the outside of my line but I didn't want my line to show through and I wanted all of the paper to be tucked under the coffee. Then I realized getting this exactly where I wanted it to go might be difficult so instead of trying to place it I laid it on the shaker and then pressed it into the background and almost got it exactly where I needed it to be. Finally, I pulled off the backing to the shaker container and added some of the exclusive shaker or um, sparkle blend sequins that come with the kit. And I didn't fill the whole thing because I really wanted you to be able to see the pretty floral paper under the cup and be able to still see the gorgeous sequins inside the cup. Finished the card off with 
every coffee every day sticker and a couple of sequins that fell out when I tried to close up my shaker bits and just adhered them to the top of the cards which I thought worked and there you go to there's today's bonus card let me know in the comments below which of today's cards is your favorites and until then happy crafting